In this video tutorial, we're going to be building a responsive menu with dropdowns. And the dropdowns are going to be both one, two, and three tier level dropdowns, and there's absolutely no JavaScript involved. So follow along, and I hope you learn something new. Let's go ahead and take a look at the finished product first to see what we're going to be building here in this tutorial. So in this drop down menu, this is at desktop view, it's going to be fully responsive. And you can see here that I, you know, we've got our logo here, I'm of course zoomed in so you can see this a little bit higher. So this was a three tier drop down. So here's the first tier, of course, at the top, second tier is the drop down menu and then tier three, you have a fly out on the drop down menu. So there's three full tiers here inside of this one. Here's just a simple tier two menu where you just have a simple drop down, and then finally a single tier over here on the far right. So that's the desktop view. Let's go ahead and look like uh, look at this menu in a mobile view. So if we scale down into something that's more like a mobile phone, we have our mobile menu. Now I did a full video on how to do a really responsive menu with animation and everything. This little uh, simple tutorial doesn't have this hamburger menu all animated with some fancy animations and whatnot. If you're interested in that, check out the description. I have a video on that. Uh, but you can see a single click will fly out the menu. And then we have our three tier menu. So if you click inside of the tier itself, then you get the second tier. And then if you click inside of the third tier, you get the third tier. So this is full three tiers inside of click events here. And then here's just our two tier menu. And then lastly, our single tier menu here. So all of that is fully tucked away inside of the mobile hamburger menu and there's no JavaScript at all. This is fully CSS built uh, menu with drop downs. So that's the finished product. Let's go ahead and jump over and get started on our beginning files now. So over here in the browser, we're just going to take a look at the HTML code first. All this code is included in the starting file. We're not going to be typing any of this out by hand. We're just going to be going over the structure really quick and we'll do most of our work in the CSS sheet. So just to kind of illustrate this, it's looks a little bit complex, but it's not too bad. So all of our code is wrapped inside of this HTML5 nav tag. So that's our parent most tag there, you can see down there at the bottom. And then we have a div that just corresponds over here to our logo area, if you will, in the menu. And then we have a label and an input. And that label and input is actually this checkbox right here. That's what's going to turn into our hamburger menu to do the mobile responsive menu. Now the mobile menu here again is just a very simple one. I have a full video that details the entire trick on how to make that work in CSS down in the description. You'll definitely want to check that out. Now the entire menu is just basically an unordered list. So we have an unordered list that wraps everything. And then the three tier menu is just right here. I'll zoom in over here. So you can see this is the first list item. And then embedded in that list item is an entire unordered list for these three items right here. And then embedded in this third item is another unordered list for these three items down here. So you can see here over in the code, the first list item here is this guy. That's the anchor text. And then embedded inside of that is an unordered list all the way down to right. Whoops. All the way down. I went too far. Uh, let's see here. You can see that goes all the way down to right here. And then embedded inside of that is another unordered list for the third tier right here. So each of the actual buttons, the clickable texts, they're wrapped inside of a label and also an anchor tag, which is the actual text, and then also a hidden input field for the checkbox. That's what enables this entire trick to work without JavaScript, is we're going to be using these checkboxes to toggle the click state on these menus to fly out and fly in the menus on mobile or hover on our desktop state. So each of those buttons will have essentially this hidden input. And then same thing down here for the second one. It's just a two tier menu. So we just have a single list item right here with one embedded unordered list for the sub fly down or drop down menu. And then this last item down here, of course, doesn't have a drop down because it's just a single tier. So that's what the HTML looks like. Again, download this file to start from this point so you don't have to type all this stuff out. And then we're going to jump over here and do all of our work in the CSS sheet. So in order to get started, what I have here is on line one. I'm just importing a, a Google font. This is a really common one called Roboto. Uh, so we can have our menu look a little bit different besides the default 
uh, web font, which is Times or Verdana or something. And let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we need to do is just flesh out a little bit of code here. So we're going to be doing this for the body tag, just so we can have a little bit of boilerplate stuff. We're going to set the background and we're just going to set this guy to uh, kind of a dark gray to start out with here. And I have the extension called Live Reload enabled. So every time I hit Command S on my keyboard, you'll see over here the browser is going to refresh and update that. So I don't have to switch back and forth. So as I sort of code here, you'll be seeing those changes. We're going to set the font size to 22 pixels. And we're going to be setting our line height uh, to 32 pixels. And of course, at the end of the tutorial, you're free to, to modify any of these values for your own needs. And we're going to set the color here to white. So we'll just say uh, FFF to set our text color to white. We're going to set our margin to zero and the padding to zero on the body tag kind of as a simple reset. And we're also going to be setting the word wrap property. This property controls whether or not words are, whoops, break word, whether or not words are allowed to break if they're too big for uh, the space. So we'll just set that and we're going to make sure this is an important rule to override anything else. And then we're going to load up that font family that we declared earlier. So we'll just set this to our Roboto. And then if that's unavailable for some reason, we'll just go with a sans serif font. So that will do it for the body tag. So I'll save and you can see those changes update with the new spacing and the new font. Okay, so let's just set up a few defaults here for our anchor tags and paragraphs. So we're gonna make our anchor tags also have the color of white. That way they won't have the default purple or blue if they're clicked on or not. So we'll just set that for white for now. And we'll just set up a little bit of text here for the paragraphs. Uh, actually, we don't have any paragraphs in this particular example. So we're not even gonna worry about this rule. I'm going for my notes here and I used to have a couple of paragraphs, but in this simple one, we don't. So let's go ahead and start off with our toggle. So that's this little guy up here, the little check box. We're gonna modify this slightly. So if we jump over here to our HTML, I'll show you that the toggle, the item that we're uh, targeting here is this label. See how the label has the class of toggle? That's the guy that we're going to be targeting here. And also this guy right here, this ID of drop. Now this rule is a little bit tricky. I'm gonna explain it as we go on a little bit later, um, but we'll start with this guy right here. So we're gonna say dot toggle. That's the course, the class name for that guy. And then also we're going to be doing a selector for any element that has the ID that begins. So this is the caret symbol, which is shift six on your keyboard equals drop. Okay, so this is a group selector, meaning that this will trigger and also this will trigger the following rules. So we're gonna be setting this guy to just display none. So in other words, all of those checkboxes, I'm just gonna invalidate this really quick and just refresh. So you can see there's a checkbox here and there's a checkbox here and here and here. These are all the checkboxes that control the sliding of the menu in our mobile view. We just want those guys to be gone by default. We're building sort of a mobile first approach here. So we're just going to say display none on those and they all disappear. We'll of course be turning them on based on certain criteria here in a minute. Okay, let's go ahead and just flesh out the little logo div. So this is just a div. We'll set its display to block, which it is by default, but if you wanted to override something in a mobile view or something, we, we can set that there. Padding, we'll say zero, 30 pixels. Uh, we're gonna float this guy to the left. So by default, it's over on the left of our menu and not covering up any of our items. Um, and we're gonna set the font size to 20 pixels and the line height will set to 60 pixels. And again, these, these numbers are just somewhat arbitrary. They're just from the, the finished example I'm going off of with, in my notes here. Okay, so that set up a little bit uh, for this little logo div right there. Uh, next, let's go ahead and work on the main toggle. 
So I'm going to pull this over just a little bit so you can kind of see everything doesn't stack. Now that we have this guy floated to the left, he's over to the left of our menu here. So that's what's happening there. Okay. So the main toggle, let's go jump over to our HTML quick. So the main toggle is this label element right here. So this is going to be our hamburger menu. It's going to be the three, the three hamburger menu element. So we'll just go ahead and say main dash toggle. And I'm not sure why that. It's giving me a yellow line there. So let's peek. Oh, it's just saying don't use an empty rule set. I haven't yet added it. Okay. So we're going to set the cursor to a pointer. Because it's not an anchor tag, it doesn't give you the pointer by default. So we have to manually set that there. And we're going to float this guy to the right. So it's on the far right. Whoops. Make sure I have a semicolon there. And we're going to give it a little bit of padding. 28 pixels, 20 pixels. This will just kind of give a little bit of space around the hamburger menu. And then we're going to give it a position, a position, if I can spell that, a relative. And we're going to say user select none. Okay, so that sets up a little bit of the defaults there for our main toggle. So that is looking good right now. And now let's go ahead and set up the actual icon. So the icon, if we go ahead and look at this, you can see that the main toggle is the actual label itself. And then inside of the label, we have a span tag right here. And we're gonna use that span tag to build out those three bars of the hamburger menu using CSS. So now we're gonna sort of create the bars. So in order to see this, it's probably just for kind of illustration's sake, I'm going to turn on outline, one pixel solid red, and save and refresh that. And then we'll be able to see this uh, popping up here. Because this class of toggle is turning everything off right now, I'm going to invalidate this rule so that we can see this while we're building it because it's invisible, of course, right now. So I'm going to come up here to the toggle and just press an X right here, which is going to mess that line up. And now you can actually see that red border over there. So this is where uh, our menu is going to start to appear up there in that right top corner. Okay. So now we can see that. Let's go ahead and uh, start to build this out. So we're going to be targeting the nav dash icon, which again is that span tag. I'm going to kind of get this in the middle a little bit. And the first thing we're going to do is just set a background of this. And we're just going to set it to the same 333 that we've been using, but you could, of course, change that color if you wanted to. We're going to set the display to block, and we're going to give it a height of two pixels. Now, that's basically going to be a single bar. So two pixels, whoops, not 20. Two pixels there on the height. We're going to give it a position. Actually, let's give it a width while we're here. And the width is going to be 18 pixels. And now for position, we're going to set that to relative. Okay. So let's make this guy just for a second here. Whoops, I didn't want to do that. We're going to set the background color to orange or something bright, just so you can see it. We're eventually going to color the menu to have a different background color so that the gray will show up. But right now, the gray of the same as the background, of course, doesn't show up. So we'll just color it orange for now, and then we'll come back and tweak that color at the end. So there's one bar. Now we're going to use the pseudo elements. I'm not going to explain these in deep detail. As I mentioned in my other video, I really go into detail on how this little trick works. Uh, but we're just going to be doing nav icon before and also dot nav icon after. And we're going to be setting these guys as pseudo elements. We'll set the background to orange as well. Now, it would probably make sense here to set up some custom elements, but we're not going to be doing that in this simple tutorial. So I can change, use variable names essentially in my CSS. And we're going to be saying uh, content. We're just going to set for blank. 
for now. So nothing inside of our content. Display, we're going to set to block. And height is going to be 100%. Width is going to be 100%. And then we're gonna now position these guys using absolute positioning to move one up and move one down. So this is the default rule set. Right now they're sitting right on top of one another. So now we need to create one more rule to actually move these guys around. So we'll do one for the nav icon before. I guess we'll start with that one. And we're just gonna move it top five pixels. So watch what happens here when I refresh over here in this area. So I save and you can see I just added that another one because I moved it uh, away from the top five pixels. Then we're gonna copy this rule and we'll paste it right below but change this to after. But instead of top on this one, it's going to be top, or instead of five pixels, it's going to be negative five pixels. I save and refresh and now you can see we have our, essentially our hamburger menu built in CSS. And this entire thing now has the pointer. So we can click on this. You can see there's the checkbox right there. It does in fact click and toggle that on and toggle that off. So that's our little element there for our hamburger menu. Next, we're going to start to work on the actual nav elements themselves. So you can see by default, a nav element and unordered lists are blocked, meaning they stack on top of one another. We don't want that to happen in all the cases because we want things you know, to behave a little bit differently. So we're gonna start to work on the nav on the desktop view, of course, at the beginning of the video, everything's going to lay out in a horizontal sort of menu. And then on a mobile view, it's gonna stack vertically. So we need to start to build in those uh, changes first. So let's go ahead and uh, begin with the nav. So let's, uh, let's just start with the nav itself. So we're gonna say nav. We're gonna be working with the after pseudo element here. And what this is doing, it's behaving like a clear fix hack. So uh, rather than adding a clear fix to all these elements, I'm basically adding a self clear fixing hack directly to the nav itself right here. So we're gonna say content blank and display, we're gonna set to table and then clear, we're gonna set to both. So it's gonna, it's basically gonna be a self clearing element here. Uh, again, this is this is a little bit advanced DSS here. So if these things aren't making sense, you can go back to some of my other videos on clearing, clear fixes, and things like that, and floats especially. Okay, uh, next, let's go ahead and do nav ul, and let's just go ahead and float this entire guy to the right. So we're gonna float our menu to the right, or our nav rather. We're gonna be setting the padding to zero and the margin to zero. I think that's probably the defaults on this element anyway, but we'll go ahead and clear them. And we'll say list style, we're gonna to set to none. So now lots of things happen when I save that. So again, I'm working on the unordered list and list, display, list style none gets rid of all the bullets. So that, I'm gonna undo that just so you can see really quick and refresh. You can see all the bullets there. When I set that, all of the bullets go away. Uh, the padding and margin makes it so all the sub elements don't automatically indent over by default when you have nested menus, a menu inside of a menu. So that kind of overrides all those. And now they're all floated to the right. So it's just kind of a big jumbled mess over here. Uh, next, let's go ahead and work on the list items that are inside of the ULs. So again, we just barely came down and we worked on the unordered list, which is the main one right here. Now we're going to be targeting all of the list items. So we'll jump back over here to our CSS and we'll say nav ULLI. I'm not using the class names. I'm just using the generic nav and generic UL. If you had multiple navs on the same page, you of course would want to add like a class and, and target that class instead of, the, instead of the generic tag. But for the sample, I'm just using the tag names. Um, so let's go ahead and give this guy a zero margin as well. And we're going to set the display to inline dash block. Now let's save and refresh here. And you can see that slightly changes things because now all of our list items are no longer all being, uh, blocked by default. They're inline block. So that's what that does there. Inline blocks kind of a really weird, um, element. 
Uh, but what we also want to do on these guys is we're going to float them all to the left. So we're going to save that and float to the left. And we're going to change the background color here. Now I'm using a specific size, uh, specific color here. You can use whatever color you want, but mine is 515F9C. These are all sort of, whoops, these are all shades of purple is what I opted for in this little demo for some reason. So that uh, sort of gives all of those list items that. Now, just so you can kind of see them all, I'm going to just give them a border here of one pixel solid. Let's go with green and save and refresh. So now you can see each one of those individual list items is covered up in a you know single border. So that's kind of where they're all hanging out. I'll get rid of that. And this is this is actually interesting. I'm not sure why in my notes I have both of these rules. We don't need display inline block because we're floating them all left. This is redundant. This one will be ignored. So we can get rid of that. And I'm going to get rid of the red uh, little border I added earlier so you can see that. So we'll come up here and just get rid of that red outline. So that guy will hang up there by itself. OK, uh, let's go ahead and continue here. So the next rule we're going to do is uh, we're going to affect all of the anchor tags that are inside of our nav. There's a whole slew of them. So rather than doing a super nested selector, I'm just going to do a generic. All anchors inside of the navs are going to have these following properties. So we'll start out and we're just going to set these guys to display block. Setting the anchor tag to display block allows you to click on the entire button area instead of just the button text. So it'll allow more area for the mouse to move around. So that's important rule there. And we're going to set some padding zero on the top and bottom, 20 pixels on the left and right. We're going to set the color to white. This is kind of redundant because our text is already white. Um, from the first rule, way up here when we set all of our anchor tags to be white. But if we, of course, had other anchor tags on our page, we would want our nav anchor tags likely to be a different color. So we'll just stick that in there for that. Um, we want our font size. Let's go ahead and change the font size. So we'll say font size of 20 pixels. And we're going to set the line height uh, to 60 pixels. And text decoration, this is an important one to none. This is going to get rid of all of the underlines. So watch what happens when I save here. You'll notice all of the underlines now on all of those text anchor tags now disappears. And things are, of course, spaced out all over the place because we've added some more padding. But here in a second, it's going to start to look a lot prettier when we start to align these things up inside of their menus. So that looks good for our uh, anchor tags. Now let's go ahead and start to work on the individual buttons. Okay, let's go ahead and go back up here. I'm gonna come back up and revalidate this rule here. Remember I turned that off just so we could temporarily see that. So I'm gonna fix this guy so it's back to normal and now you can see things are starting to get climbed, uh, cleaned up a lot better there. So you can kind of see the structure here, but there's our three tier drop down here at the top. So that's the main link. And then we have our first set of drop downs, uh, which is one, two, three. And then this is the sub menu of the third. Our second tier is all built right in here. Here's the main link. And then these are the three sub items. And then our last um, one tier is right here with just a single one. So it's a little bit kind of tricky to see the separation between those three. But remember, we're building the mobile first and then we'll add in the desktop second. So we're going to sort of build this menu so it all stacks. So we'll come back down here to the bottom and we'll just keep going again. My CSS isn't in any particular order. You could definitely rearrange this a little bit better. Uh, but we are next going to work on the hover states. So we're going to set up a rule for the nav U L L I U L L I colon hover. So this will affect all of the list items in their hovered state that are children of an unordered list that are children of a list item, that are children of an unordered list, that are children of a nav. So this is our third tier list items. Uh, so let's just go ahead and give these guys a background dash color. And uh, we're going to make this 7, 0, 8, 3, D, 8. And we'll save. And now we'll come over here and you can see that we now have all of these guys and a hover. 
So this is affecting not the main menus, not the main ones, not, but rather all of the sub elements. So this one, this one, these guys, not this one, all of these, not this one. Okay. And let's go ahead and now we're going to make a few things disappear because we only want by default just the main list items to appear. And when we click on those, we want the fly down or drop down menu to appear. So we're going to hide all of the elements that are essentially sub elements right here. So it's nav ul ul. So this will affect essentially any sub items because the second ul means they're going to be nested inside of a first ul, meaning they'll all be drop down items. So we're going to set here display to none. And we're going to set the position to absolute because we're going to be positioning their children. And we're going to set top to 60 pixels. Okay, so you can see now they have essentially all disappeared. So we set top to 60 pixels because when we make them reappear, we want them to appear down 60 pixels. In other words, we want them to appear down here somewhere, right? So that's why we set that because they need to be a drop down menu. And then the position of absolute gives us a context where we can then position and move the children items. Okay, so they're all gone now. Now let's go ahead and set up the, uh, we'll set up the actual list items themselves. So on this one, we're going to say nav ul ul l i. So this is all of the list items that are within a drop down menu. Okay. So we're going to set the width here to 170 pixels. We're going to say float none. And we're going to display these guys as if they were list items. So display list item. And position is just going to be relative. Okay. Now I'm going to temporarily turn off this position absolute so you can see what that did. Or not position absolute, sorry. Display none. And now you can see kind of how things are starting to line up. So if I don't hide the sub elements, right, they're all right down here. Now I'm way zoomed in, so I'm going to zoom out a click or two uh, so you can kind of see this. But that essentially set the width of all of our child elements. Okay. So let's now come down in here and do one more of these. So we're going to say, um, lost my spot here. There we go. So it's going to be nav ul 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 li. <clears throat> so now this rule is going to affect all the third tier list items. So we're going to say position relative and top negative 60 pixels because we want that to shift back up and then left 170 pixels and save and refresh. Now I'm going to give this guy here just an outline so you can kind of see what's happening here again. And now you can kind of see what's happening. So before this third tier was just stuck underneath uh, the tier three from the rule above here because it was displaying as a list item. But now essentially we shift it up 60 pixels and then left 170 pixels, whatever the width of your menu is. So then when we roll down eventually and we hit on tier three, that third tier menu will be over at the right and we can toggle it over here. So that's what this rule here is doing is affecting that third tier. Now I'm going to leave that outline on just for a minute so we can kind of see that hang out there. And let's go ahead and set the, so this rule is nav ul li colon hover and the child ul. Now this one's a little bit weird, but we're going to say display inherit. So what this is going to mean is that the unordered list, so this is your uh, third, <laughs> let's see, this is getting a little bit confusing even for me reading these. So this is your third tier um, unordered list that's a child of a list item when it's hovered upon. Okay, so that's a very specific rule, and it's going to inherit the display from the 
um, parent element essentially. So that's what uh, this rule is, is doing there. Okay, uh, let's see, last two before we do our media query here. So this one's gonna be li child a after, and this is just gonna set up an automatic plus sign. So in other words, So this rule is just going to set up. So this rule is just going to set up an automatic plus sign. We're actually using the content uh, rule for what it was intended for initially in CSS. So any elements, any menu items that do have children will get a little plus added to them automatically. So once we save here, you can see that they get their little pluses there added uh, up there. And we will do one more rule here, li child of anchor. And if it's an only child, we're gonna change that pseudo selector to blank. Essentially just an empty string. So now you can see that that last one there in the far right doesn't get a plus because it doesn't have any child, it's the only child but these two do get pluses because they have children as well as our tier three here gets a plus because it has children over here in the red so it's kind of a fancy way to automatically add the little plus sign to to your selectors to show that they do have sub items okay, so now that we have our sort of menu you can see the structure here let's go ahead and fix that rule that i invalidated a minute ago just so we were while we were seeing that Let's turn off all of the sub elements. Okay, and now we can see our menu working. So again, this is kind of this, that magic rule right there is what makes this work. So as I hover over these elements, they appear and I can see the drop downs. They do have their hover state. And as I come into tier three, it flies out and I can see it's over here to the right. I can now hover over on tier two and it flies down. And then of course, tier one has nothing. So uh, I completely uh, lied to you earlier. I said we were building the mobile version first. We're building the desktop version first, and then we're going to build the mobile version in the media query. But now this desktop version essentially is all the way down. So I'm going to get rid of this little outline we did on that tier three menu, and it's uh, ready to go. So there's the little menu here. Um, one last thing we could probably do is maybe we want to make this little purple extend all the way through here. So depending on you know, your preference there, we can highlight that and switch that around. I'll just leave it like this for now. So let's now add our media query to finally do the responsive element, and then we'll be done here. So we're gonna set up our at media, uh, at media, and we're going to do all and uh, max width. So we'll just kind of set this up as if it was tablet and below, so 768 pixels. So at a maximum width of 768, then the following rules apply, meaning 768 and below. So now we're gonna override essentially a bunch of things in our CSS to make our menu behave a little bit differently in the mobile version. So for our nav rule, we're just gonna set the margin to zero. And for the nav UL, we're gonna override the float because we don't want these guys floated left or right. We're just gonna set the float to none. And we want to change the way our toggle works. So we're gonna say toggle. Um, and the anchor and also the menu. So now we wanna turn on our menu. So we're gonna set that to display none. And I'm gonna zoom out here too, whoops. There we go. So we can see our menu, I had that little inspect up there. Um, and we want to go ahead and tweak our toggle a little bit here. So we're gonna set the toggle, whoops, dot toggle here. 
to display a block background color we're going to set this to a specific color here so we'll say 515 f9c we're going to set the padding to 0 and 20 pixels now it probably makes sense to switch this into a mobile view because none of these changes are being affected here i wasn't even paying attention here so i'm going to say inspect element and we're going to go into mobile view here in Firefox and just shrink this down a little bit so that you can see what these changes are doing. That makes sense there. So you can see we've just uh, kind of tweaking things in here a little bit. Once I come up, we get the menu. Once I come down, we've now toggled. These are starting to override here. So that uh, does it there. Let's see where was a padding. And we're gonna change the color here. So the color will go with white as well. Font size, 20 pixels. Line height of 60 pixels. Text decoration of none and a border of none. Don't think we had a border earlier anyway. And then when we hover on that toggle element, we want to change it. So let's do our dot toggle hover. And we're just going to go with a color here that is slightly different than we have. Background color, we'll say 7083D8. Okay. So now you can see when we hover over that, we have a slightly different color. That's what that did for us on our little toggle there. Okay, now this element is going to affect all the IDs that begin, so caret sign shift six, with the word drop. And when they're in their checked state, plus their unordered lists, we're going to set to display block. Now this one's a bit of a confusing rule, so I'm going to explain this one slightly because, whoops, I did that incorrectly, ID um, equals, we need an equal sign right there. Uh, so what that is doing is now when I click this menu, you can see that they all appear. That's essentially making these guys appear. So what this is doing is searching for any element that has the ID of, that has the ID that begins with the word drop. So if we go look at our HTML here, I'm going to pull this over really quick. You can see that we have uh, one right here. So there's drop dash two. So this one begins with drop. Uh, this one begins with drop. This one down here begins with drop. Essentially, all of those main list items have that label, that checkbox label that begins with the word drop. Okay. So in other words, all of those elements are going to be uh, triggered here. In their checked state, we look for the sibling unordered list and set it to block. So if we come back here to our HTML, when this drop is in its checked state, meaning it's clicked, the hidden input checkbox has been clicked, look for the sibling unordered list, which is in this case the menu, and set it to display block. Right now it's set to display none. So in other words, when I click this, remember there's a hidden checkbox, I click this, it sets all those siblings of all those different drop elements to display block, and now the mobile menu appears. So that's kind of the magic trick that makes this little toggle work. Back to our CSS here. And let's go ahead and just do a few other modifications here inside of this media query. So we want to make that menu look a little bit better in mobile view. So we'll say nav ULLI. We want these guys to display as block as well. And we want their width to be 100%. Okay. And next we're going to do the nav ul ul dot toggle. So this is the toggles and also the nav ul ul a. So also the anchor tags that are inside of fly down menus. So we're going to set this guy to have a padding of zero on the top and bottom and 40 pixels on the left and right. 
and that gives that little pixel or that little padding area on the right. Now I'm a bit zoomed in here so you can see when I go down to a regular view that's what it's looking like right now. And another rule here, this one's going to be for the nav, UL, 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 A. So this is our third tier anchor tag. So we're going to give those guys a padding of 0 and 80 pixels on the left and right. And it's a little tricky to see over there, but that's the third tier down there. Okay, and... Let's keep going here. So now we're going to change the background color on some of these elements. So nav, ul, 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 a. Um, we can actually just do this in the same rule. We're going to, we don't need to create a new rule here. We're just going to change the background right here. So background color, and we're going to do this one as one, four, one, six, two, five. So that's the third tier background color you can see right there. Let's affect the background color of the next list item here. So this one's nav ULLI ULLI dot toggle and then also nav UL UL A. So we're gonna set the background color here to the exact no actually this one's slightly different as well. One F two four three B. Okay, so that's the second tier uh, drop down background color. This rule, this is the third tier uh, one. And we'll set the nav UL UL. So we want to take away the float on these guys to none. And we're going to set the position back to just static, which is the default there. And the color, again, we're just set to white. You could, of course, change these later if you wanted to. So that's what that is looking like now. This one's a little bit tricky. So we're going to set the nav ul ul li colon hover child ul. And also the nav ul li colon hover sub ul to display none. Okay, so this is basically a rule which is going to make all of the fly down menus be hidden by default. Okay, just a couple more rules here. So nav ul ul li. We're going to set this guy to display display block. And we're going to set it to be 100% width. And then lastly here, the nav ul 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 li. So this is the third tier. Um, we're going to set these guys to position of static as well. Okay, so one thing is broken. And because right now our elements are still floating left, so they're supposed to be stacking on top of one another, tier one, tier two, tier three. And, and so let's just go ahead and double check here our code to see which element we've messed up. All right, I have found the issue. You probably noticed this when I was actually coding along earlier. But when I did this little rule on line 156, instead of nav U L L I, I just typed the letter U. So that, of course, needs an L. And now when I save that and come back here and look at the menu, you can see now they're behaving correctly. They're actually 100% wide like they were supposed to be initially. So that little problem was the last little bit. So now let's just take a look at our menu. You can see that I can fold these out. There's my tier one, tier two, and then the tier three has a different background color. Of course, you can customize all those things as well as it's a little bit farther indented over from the left. This one has 40 pixels. I think we did 80 pixels on the third tier. And I can minimize all those. There's my tier two. I can fly out the tier two. And then lastly, my tier three is just a single tier. And then of course, I can also minimize and hide the entire menu. If I navigate up to my desktop view, you can see they automatically fold out into their correct size. And now they're all set up on just automatic hover state. So as I hover over these, I'm getting the hover state of all these three tier, two tier, and one tier menus. So that's finally the end of this video tutorial. I hope you enjoyed learning how to make a drop-down menu in CSS without any JavaScript. 
So don't forget to subscribe to the channel, click the thumbs up, share with your friends, and we will see you in the next one. Thanks. Thanks.